Hello, my name is Malcolm Williams. I'm a development associate working for JBG Smith on the American Science 4.1 application. I'm excited to provide a brief overview of the project today. This overview serves as a supplement to other SPRC materials, including a presentation by county staff and a virtual walkthrough. You can find all of this information, as well as these slides on the county's website for the project. Let's get started. Here we see an aerial shot of Crystal City outlined with the red border, the red star being the Americana site. Next, we'll zoom in and have HQ2 shown to the left and the Americana site shown to the right, outlined with this white rectangle. The site is approximately 60,000 square feet. Next, we'll have some contextual slides showing the site's existing conditions. Again, some additional contextual slides showing existing conditions. And on this slide, we'll show the site's location relative to the adjacent buildings. Next, we'll have our project overview. The proposed zoning application plans to redevelop the site as CO Crystal City with a height limit of 200 feet, gross residential square footage of about 525,000 square feet, a unit count of 636 units and approximately 3,800 square feet of retail. There will be two levels of below grade parking, which will be comprised of 188 spaces, which yields approximately 0.3 units spaces per unit. Offsite will have 204 spaces, which will come at the Bartlett, which will yield about 0.32 spaces per unit. Hello, my name is Tom Kerwin. I'm founding principal of BKL Architecture. I'm pleased to present the project design overview to you today. As described earlier, the site is rectilinear in shape, oriented in the east-west direction. It's bound by Eads to the west and Richmond Highway to the east and existing buildings to the north and the south. This, this set of diagrams describe how the building came to be shaped and the form of the building in compliance with the sector plan 60 feet from the existing buildings to the north and the south at the tower and 40 feet at the podium. We believe this opportunity, uh, as required by the sector plan, also adds to the richness of the form and the mass massing of the building. The uses, uh, which we'll describe, retail at the base holding the Eid Street elevation at grade. We're going to go into further detail about the pedestrian experience, experience along Eads and ideally eventually along Richmond Highway, multifamily residential above a podium uh, of amenity and retail and lobbies, and then an articulated top, which allows for outdoor space, amenity space and mechanical space, which is screened uh, to improve also uh, the skyline as required in the sector plan. The introduction of the podium, uh, a middle and a top as required by the sector plan with change in materiality uh, and articulation uh, and setbacks at the top of the building. The skin of the building, the fenestration, the exterior wall is formed by many things, including the orientation of each facade, uh, the uh, introduction of horizontal and vertical expression uh, and then an expanded grid uh, that occurs at the shift uh, that's indicated in the lighter blue uh, to further break down the massing and provide for a richness of materiality, color, uh, and fenestration. This is the view along Eads, uh, looking slightly south. You'll see again uh, this, this goal of the sector plan, which is very important, which is to enhance the pedestrian experience and create a vibrant community, a unified community that brings together all elements uh, of a vibrant mixed use neighborhood with um, the uh, allowance for the bi bicycle, new bicycle lanes along Eads, a pedestrian friendly, uh, walkable experience with landscaping, with retail frontage uh, along the major frontage along Eads with generous ceiling heights to allow for vibrant retail, outdoor seating, the res residential entry uh, the development, uh, which is signified by the address 1400, the allowance for a pedestrian path along the north side of the building, 
you start to see the articulation and the break between the podium and the tower. And a slightly different view at dusk, same elevation, looking slightly north, showing this podium screening element that also serves as the portal uh, uh, for the vehicular entry and service entry, and also serves to screen those elements, again, as required by the sector plan, to pull those elements off the street uh, in such a way that screens them, and also uh, allows still, though, for a very highly visible retail corner. Some precedents that we looked at early on for the, uh, the fenestration and the skin, we're looking at a precast skin, which allows for a variety of depth, shade and shadow, color, uh, which we're very excited about. This slide starts to show some of the detail of the skin, which we believe is very environmentally sensitive. There is glazing, of course, to allow light and air and views to the units, but the majority of the skin is an opaque material precast. We're looking at lighter grays and whites. Um, we have two major zones on the north and south elevations, depicted on the diagram in the lower right. The, the majority of the skin has this uh, gridded condition of, again, white and grays that are highly articulated and very visible uh, uh, to the public realm along Eads and along Richmond Highway. The, the center zone or the zone in the middle of the side, the vertical zone, breaks the horizontality of the building and provides for a larger grid of a darker gray, uh, signifying both uh, the shift in massing and also uh, some relief to the, uh, the length of the building, breaking it with this vertical element. The east and west elevations uh, are narrow. The narrow faces of the buildings are further broken down uh, with the introduction of the horizontal and vertical expression of the precast and the grounding of the building at the base in bo at both elevations. The long elevations, again, depicting the base, middle, and top, or an articulated top, the grounding of the building with the darker precast, uh, the grid that marches across the elevation, but it's broken by the larger, darker grid, and then the introduction of balconies in places, which we believe are visually attractive from the outside, allowing for views, the view corridors past the existing buildings, uh, but also work well with the units inside and the planning of the units. The, the north elevation with a similar idea, Again, the breaking down of the long elevation with this vertical element where the shift occurs in the massing to comply with the setbacks. A detailed view of the podium and how the balconies are integrated into the design uh, with the darker precast expression, the balconies uh, with a lighter rail expression uh, juxtaposed against the, uh, the more solid precast. The detail along the Richmond Highway section, again, with the building being grounded by the darker precast, and there'll be more detail provided later in the presentation of both uh, the existing uh, condition of Richmond Highway and the proposed uh, lower end of Richmond Highway. Pulling back, hopefully tying everything together, a view of an overall view of the building, again, describing the richness of materiality, the variety of expression along the facades, the introduction of the balconies that also help to break the horizontality of the site and the building with these vertical expression of balconies. The balconies project out in certain areas where the views over top the existing buildings provide for more longer views and more ample outdoor space for the units above. You start to see the shaping of the top, the introduction of outdoor space, greenery at the top. Uh, we're very, again, very excited about the eaves elevation and this holding of the street edge and a vast improvement of the existing condition that hopefully serves as a precedent for future developments along this corridor. And a, a slight aerial view again, um, bringing it all together, showing the, the richness of materiality, the color, the introduction of the balconies, the various expression of horizontal and vertically expressed uh, precast, with, which would provide a richness of shade and shadow. And this element along ease, which holds the street edge and we believe will be make for really a wonderful pedestrian environment and incorporating again all the elements to, to, of a vibrant uh, neighborhood as called for in the sector plan bringing together bicycle traffic taking vehicular traffic off the street in one place providing for uh, an enlivened pedestrian experience with the richness of retail landscaping entries and entries to the building
Hello, my name is Carolina Pazdrazdis, and I'm a Senior Development Analyst at JBG Smith, who will be walking through the project site plan in relation to Route 1. First, to orient everyone and provide context of the site, this slide here reflects existing hotel footprint relative to the current Route 1 condition, which previously had been up to the northern and the southern property lines. Next, we can focus on the ground floor plan, reflecting the existing Route 1 condition, which features some retail as well as the residential entrance on South Eighth Street, right across from Met Park. There will also be programmed amenity space on the northern portion of the building, leading to a green space for residents to enjoy. On the southern portion of the site, we have our back of house, ramp to the below grade garage, and the residential and retail loading docks. Finally, on the eastern portion of the site, you may note that we have some ground floor residential units. Given the limited frontage on South Eighth Street, we have been focused on the best ways to mitigate issues related to pickup and drop off. And the following slides outline some ideas we have to alleviate this concern. Here in the south entry of the building, package deliveries from carriers such as FedEx, UPS, and USPS will be able to pull into the loading area and then deliver packages directly into the package room that will be programmed into the amenity space. Additionally, here on South Eighth Street, we have a drop-off zone that with the curb modifications could fit the full width of a seven-foot parking space outside of the adjacent traffic lanes. Passengers would be dropped off on the concrete island and would cross the bike lane to get onto the sidewalk. Therefore, we would be incorporating the best practices for striping and signage to help mitigate pedestrian and bicycle conflicts. Finally, we are also discussing with the neighboring owner on what potential there might be for a shared passenger drop-off north of the building. Next, we will discuss the project's relation to the anticipated Route 1 future improvements based on the latest guidance from VDOT and the community. As we work through the design process, we will continue to refine the project as assumptions for the final grades and conditions for Route 1 are subject to change, and we will ensure that the building's design and program can successfully accommodate both conditions. The existing Route 1 condition can be seen to the left, and you may notice that the property line for the site extends beyond the existing Route 1 off-ramp to 15th Street. To the right, the new Route 1 condition is shown including the proposed 24-foot sidewalk, which is consistent with the latest discussions with VDOT and the community. For reference, we are also showing the existing retaining wall with a dotted red line. With the current information from VDOT, we are anticipating that the future Route 1 elevation will be nearly even with the project's ground floor, reflecting a material difference in the frontage towards the east side of the building as the highway in the existing condition will drop and realign and this area will become a 24-foot sidewalk in the future condition. Here is a closer look to the previous rendering, highlighting the current condition of Route 1 in relation to the proposed building. Note the fronting retaining wall. We will still have some residential units that were reflected in the ground floor plan. As we look to the future condition, we can see how the impact to the highway's grade creates a better pedestrian experience adjacent to the project. Finally, I just wanted to take a moment to introduce the project team members from JBG Smith and BKL. We all look forward to your feedback and for the upcoming FPRC meeting. Thank you so much.